question, um, but I am excited to see all of y'all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen so that we can do this. Um, I appreciate all of y'all for being here. Um, I know that this is an hour of your time. I want to make it worthwhile. I am not a, a genius rocket scientist who's going to throw at you things that um, are, are things that nobody's ever known before, but I did want to um, take this morning to really give any tidbits of information based around awareness, brand, and community that I think might be helpful. Um, and sometimes we just need that reminder, um, especially when we're looking at long-term success, um, because we have to be looking and reflecting on, on where we are now um, and also where we've been. So um, I'm bringing to you today, the ABCs, the awareness, brand, and community essential components for long-term success. Um, and as LaShawn said, um, I just started Finacious. Um, I previously was with um, the Early Learning Coalition for eight years, um, and before that, um, I was with the Florida Department of Health and Children's Medical Services. Um, in both of my roles over the last 15 or so years, uh, I spent a lot of time gathering resources for families, um, working with frontline staff on how to better access resources, how to better connect with families, to connect with each other. Um, and so I'm bringing a little bit of that uh, here to you today. Um, I'm a mom, I'm, I've got two little kids. I've got Hinton who's six and Finley who is two. Uh, Finley is my Sour Patch kid. I don't know if any of y'all have Sour Patch kids, but um, you know, Hinton was as, as sweet as can be and, and, and never uh, a dull moment with the two of them. Um, and then we just recently added to our family a little puppy. Um, who in all transparency is actually to my right, um, who you may see, um, she's nine weeks old and she's still a baby. So maybe she'll sleep through this. Um, and then I have my husband, uh, Matt, who um, some of you may recognize, he works with uh, Play Big uh, Therapy and Learning Center. Uh, so I am gonna move forward. Um, a few months ago, I decided to go out on my own and created Finacious uh, Visionary Consulting and Solutions. Uh, and really, I want to pour good into the world and affect positive change. And y'all, I am so excited to share that uh, when I put that out into the world, it's amazing how many people want to do good. Uh, they have ideas to do good. They just don't know how to go about doing it. Um, and there are so many things that are moving that are, are just full of goodness. Um, so I couldn't be more happy uh, you know, to, and proud to say that our community wants to pour good into the world. Um, and I'm honored that I get to play a part in some of that. So for today, um, we're gonna cover awareness, brand, community, and some solutions uh, for success uh, in the future. As LaShawn said, you can interrupt me at any time. Anytime I've ever trained, I always disclaimer that there are no stupid questions. You're asking a question because you are looking for an answer. And either I've not given information in a way that uh, was understood or needs clarification or you need more information. Um, but there, there, to me, there are never uh, stupid questions. So whatever the question is, you can send it my way, um, interrupt me at any time, and I, uh, you know, I'll do my best to answer if I have the answer. Um, if not, I will find it for you. Um, so awareness. Awareness is the greatest agent for change. And in thinking about awareness, many people think about the cancer awareness ribbons each month or uh, social awareness and awkwardness um, or just general awareness about topics and or visual awareness or, you know, there, there are a million different things tied to awareness. Um, but when it comes to the nonprofit and human service world, um, we're going to talk about oh, three. So um, one of the things that I want to prompt you with is what is something that you feel in your world, um, whether it be at your work or in your personal life uh, that you are very aware of? Uh, think about how you came to be aware of it. Was it an experience you had? 
Um, was it uh, something that you were given or told? Um, but think of something that you in your life's travels and your path um, in your life adventure um, that brought you to be more aware about something and think about how that awareness has made you feel um, and then how you make others aware. Um, it, it truly is when you are aware of something, um, it is a powerful tool um, because it is something that you want to share uh, because you've lived it, breathed it, experienced it, you know all about it. Um, and when you are aware of something, you're more, um, you, I mean, in any situation you're in, whether it's talking to your best friend in a room of your board members, in a room of your staff, in the general public, you are more prone to speak of something that you are familiar with and aware of. Um, and so that's where I want to make sure in the messaging today that, you know, awareness for the nonprofit sector um, can be narrowed down to three super important types of awareness. Um, and these three types affect the human services world. Um, so there's prompted awareness. And so that means that if you ask somebody if they knew who provided um, services for the homeless, they could pick your agency's name off of a list given to them. So that's okay, that's good. They know something about what you do and who you are, um, but they don't know it enough to have it be something that they come up with themselves um, or they're not well-versed in it, but it's still okay because they're aware. Um, unprompted awareness is an individual can think of your organization without needing a list. So when somebody, you know, you, you're out, this used to happen all the time. If I wore my ELC shirt out at the grocery store and they said, oh my goodness, I need help with the, you know, a specific topic. And I could list the different resources in our community because I was familiar and aware of them um, without having to look at a list. Top of mind awareness is where we all want to be. That That is the type of awareness that any agency should strive for when you're serving others and serving the community. If it's a an experience that brought them to be aware of your services, and it was a an experience that was good and wonderful, um, you you know it also can be bad, um, which is not good. Um, but the top of mind awareness is where you would like the general public to be. So when somebody is just having an, a general conversation and uh, somebody's very passionate and tied to the agency or the services that you provide, there's somebody who basically spits out everything that you all do and all the programs and all the resources because they're so proud and tied to what your agency does and they're very aware. Um, and so you strive for the top of mind awareness, but overall um, general awareness by prompted awareness or unprompted awareness, um, you know, happen quite often, but ultimately an agency and through the work that you do, um, it would be nice if we all had everyone who, you know, had a deep connection to the services um, that you provide and the programs you provide. So your brand um, is basically what about uh, what others say about you when you're not in the room. And I like this quote because I, it, I'm not trying to push it because, you know, gossip or what have you, but people talk and the power of communication and word of mouth is huge in the human services world. And if somebody came through your door and had a not so good experience, it doesn't matter all of what it what your brand stands for and it's it's that experience they had that they take with them um, and and they're going to go take that into a room where you're not in a home where you're not in a meeting room where you're not and be able to share their raw and honest opinion and you want others to share that honest opinion and have it be good you want others to say wonderful things about your programs and your services. And so just be mindful of that, that every time somebody enters your door, um, I know with COVID, it's not the actual door anymore for most people, um, but whether they access your services through online forum or phone 
or in person or out in the streets because they see you have, you know, your logo on and they recognize your brand, your interactions with everybody along the way basically builds that experience and that general awareness and your brand with those who then go on to have, you know, their own conversations with others. So just be mindful that, you know, your brand carries a lot of weight, um, but it's not just about looks and colors and good looks. So a lot of folks rebrand and they want logos that pop and they want logos with certain colors and they want a cleaner logo. And that's all good. You need that, right? You need, you need a logo that's recognizable for your brand and you need a color scheme that, that goes with, you know, consistently across, you know, all of the work that you do. Um, but they can be stunning and memorable, um, but your brand to an outsider in the community is truly developed over time from a collection of inputs. So you can have the nicest thing, nice, you pay for the nicest logo or have the most amazing person design something for you. But when somebody experiences an interaction with your staff or your board or yourselves, and it's not good, that, that plays into your overall brand. Um, so it's not just about colors and good looks. Um, so really, um, I want to pause here for a second and have you all reflect on each of the work, each of the human service agencies um, that you work for, the nonprofits you um, are a part of. Think about what you stand for, right? So like I said, many people think your brand is just your logo and your mission and your vision. Those play a huge role. But what do you stand for? Um, would anyone like to share uh, where you work um, and what you stand for? What do you believe that your agency stands for? Hi. Hi. My name is Tatiana, Hi, my name is Tatiana Camacho. I'm the social media intern for She Academy Incorporated here in Tallahassee, Florida. And our mission is to just help girls transition from middle school to high school or high school on to college and give, you know, great mentoring service and programs to help prepare girls for just life in general. That's wonderful. Thank you for your work that you're doing. Would anyone else like to share what you stand for? Good morning. Good morning. How you guys doing? Um, I'm Jonathan Goodwin, the Director of uh, Prevention, Intervention, and Diversion Services here at the Life Center in Tallahassee, Florida. And we work with youth and young adults ages 13 to 23 to provide life coaching, develop them socially, emotionally, and I'll be able to provide resources to help push them forward. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, one more. One more person, and what do you stand for? I'll go ahead. Uh, my name is Haley Bear. I am a 4-H program assistant for the Wakula County UF um, Extension 4-H. Um, and we are actually currently planning an after-school program and a summer program for the kids here in Wakulla County to give them a place to go after school and during summer while their parents are working. Um, we're gonna offer tutoring, mentoring, as well as uh, some 4-H curriculum to teach them life skills they may not get uh, either at school or at home um, and give them a sense of community in the community that they don't feel safe in sometimes. Thank you for sharing, Haley. I really wanted to say something. Else. Go, yes, please go. Yes. Well, um, it's in Noma Africa. Our program really is a different kind of brand that I could have loved other people to know, both the young and the older people, because th this program is originated from the skill of being creative and born in Africa, our livelihood and what we can do to the particular issues that are happening in the United States. I'm not very young, but after four degree and master's here, I think my program is something that I would like to share, not only to this little minute, it's good for us to know what can help us in this traumatic 
time even for the COVID, for everyday shooting, for students that dropped out of school, is a truthful skill. We can do drumming, we can do painting, we can do other therapeutic great information that I can send to you. Why are we doing this? So that all those times that we have on truancy, doing nothing, selling drugs, drinking, dropping out of school, so that our great youth that God has already blessed to be in the United States of America can enjoy their life. That our older people can have time to have a little counseling, a therapeutic for the parents too, because they see all this, all these years. Mm -hmm. How much more on this COVID-19? So the brand is not a, just a, a, a brand that we want to create for a little thing. It's for each of every one of us. If we embed our life to the reality of what max making is. When we were very little, max making is like a child thinking of having a different faith. You're having a max on your own faith. It's a double max. It is a spiritual embedment that when you understand ordinary meaning of masking, drumming, a different kind of dancing from your own heart, it melts your brain, your mind, your feelings. Whenever you remember, I'm going to paint, I'm going to draw. You can draw closing your eyes. So our program, if it will be really like come out for younger people, I love the ones doing their intervention or the people that say they are uh, on a, that the first girl that spoke, I thought she's in school. It's good for them to see a therapeutic way of themselves bringing out a true understanding of African cultural and traditional embedment in this modern time that we need because of the traumatic events and Ms. the Edith, issues that we're having. Miss Edith, thank you. We will connect you with Morgan because I know you're trying to do some building your brand and your program. So we'll connect you with Morgan and hopefully you and her can get together and, and, and talk through the way to kind of market some of the stuff that you're talking about and the services you provide. So thank you for sharing. I saw your mouth moving earlier, but you were on mute. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yes, and, and so between all of you who shared, the four of you, what I saw, it didn't matter what type of program that you were, what words were coming out, you could tell the passion, right? And you could tell that you cared about the people that you're serving. And that's what needs to happen when you speak about the services that you stand for. Like, what do you, what do, you do and what do you say when you're interacting with others? And when that passion comes across, it comes across as you care, right? And you, you wanna include others. You wanna make sure you know, that you care about how other people feel and how they're receiving the information. And those things combined truly are what make your brand. You have to remember what you do and remember what you say and how you make people feel. And the combination of the two can carry your brand forever. Um, if, if done with, with the mindset of including others in, in, you know, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, but making sure that you know, you're consistent. And when you talk about what you stand for, it, you, you still stand for the same thing you, you know, you're, you're saying today as you do tomorrow when you speak to a customer or a client. Um, you know, the consistency is key. Um, but I really love in Hamilton, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you, what do you fall for? you've got to stand for something, right? So when you're in the human services world, you've got to stand for something and believe it and, and be able to advocate um, for others and, and push your mission and vision out there. Um, but keeping in mind, you know, how others feel and, and it, it matters what you do and what you say. You are, it doesn't matter what position you are in an organization, you are an extension of that brand, right? And so, executive directors get out there and they do they do what they need to do in their role then you have maybe the community person who goes out there and does their outreach in their role but you can't forget about the people who are on the front line serving these families and clients and customers um, the ones who do the finance the ones who do you know provider relations the ones you know the ones who do contracting they're all an extension uh, of an entity's brand. So everyone has to be on the same page. And when, you know, 
anyone has an interaction with somebody else, it affects your brand if it's a negative interaction. And so that's where we really want to look at the greatness of um, the community work. And so the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members, a heart of grace and a soul generated by love. Um, Coretta Scott King said that and it couldn't be more true. Um, so looking at each of the work, each of the agencies you all work for and the work that you do each and every day, defining your communities, both internal and external and being aware. Sometimes it's just a matter of having that conversation um, and, and having that transparent um, conversation and discussion across your board, your staff, the general public and the customer don't just assume that your board members are just your board members. Don't assume that your staff members are just your staff members. There are many agencies in our community whose board members and staff members actually utilize your services, right? So they are a customer too, and they're a client too. And then they also, you know, work with the general public and everyone again is an extension of your brand. So, in thinking of a brand, again, there, there is a group of people who go into this work and think your brand is just your logo and making it look good. It is so much more than that. It is really working to get your communication, both internal and external, and your community, understanding who your communities are and how they, they they're, they're not just, in one subset area all the time. Um, just be mindful of that because, you know, I think back to some of the work that I've done and there are individuals on the front line of many agencies who utilize the services of their agency and other agencies and they have those experiences too, right? And then they have that word of mouth. And, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, if you you have to be, having those open and transparent discussions and conversations with all of your communities um, and, and know that they're not just, you know, the board's not just a board and you can't just have the board subset over here and you can't have the general public over here because the general public may become your board, your staff or your customer or multiple. Um, so just being mindful um, of your communities and how you're reaching out to your communities. And so what I really wanted to hone in on was um, um, some tips for success and really reflecting on your agency goals. Um, if you're in a position um, where you manage a team um, or you are in a position where you are on leadership or an executive director, um, really looking at um, do your agency goals align with your logo, your mission, and your vision? Things change over time, right? So funding changes, programs change, uh, staff overturn, leadership changes. If you're in a position in an agency where things have not been updated to reflect who your community is today and the customers you're serving today, it's a disservice to your community only because you're reflecting something that is not now. Um, you're, you're getting your staff and your front line to try and buy into something that they're not doing. Um, and so it's okay to rebrand and redefine. It, it's not, it's not, you know, you can make it as simple or as, as detailed as, you know, you wish. Um, there are some agencies who all get into a room and they, they flip it real fast because they can get in there and they can brainstorm and they respect each other and they respect each other's ideas and opinions. Um, and then there are others who take um, a methodical long-term, uh, you know, six months to a year to rebrand and redefine and launch. Whatever works for your agency that's fine. That is, that is, that is up to, you know, you, your team and, you know, the people that work there and the board, of course, um, if you have a board, um, but it really doesn't do any good to have goals, logos, missions, and visions that are of the past. So really be thinking about that going forward. Are your 
Is your mission outdated? Is your vision outdated? Are you serving a, an additional population that you've not even included in your goals, right? So funding comes through and funding changes, and now you're serving the elderly when you were not serving the elderly before. Have you reflected on your branding so that the general public and the others also can see that you're now serving another population? including the elderly, including whomever that subset is, making sure that you reflect um, and making sure things are up to date. And if you are on the front line and you are not in a position to make those changes, be an advocate for change, you know, put it in writing or, or ask for a meeting and, and say, hey, you know, I've been doing this work and I've noticed that these things don't align. It's my opinion. Um, but Sometimes people don't assume people know those things um, because you go in, into the human services world and you do your every day and your every day is a lot of work. And then you come in and you start your day all over again, serving families and the community and children and whomever you're serving. And it takes a lot of you. Um, but if you do notice that those things are not um, up to date, um, that's one way that you can look um, to uh plan for the long term and, um, you know, have it be reflective of what you're, you're currently doing. Um, and each, I've mentioned this, each staff member is an extension of your brand. Don't, don't dismiss staff, um, depending on their roles or their teams. Every staff person not only holds a job in your work, in your field of work, in your agency, but they have a family. They have other halves, they have partners, they have extended family, they have other groups they're in, they have churches they go to, they, they are a part of boards themselves. Um, and so know who each of your staff members are, know, know what they're into, know what, you know, know where they connect themselves outside of their work, right? That's healthy. They need to be connecting themselves outside of their work to something they're passionate about. But don't forget that's an extension of your brand. And if they're not happy, it's not going to look good when you're not in that room and they're talking. Um, and so include all staff on agency updates and discussions when you can. I know all staff can't be included in everything all the time, every time. But they are so full of different ideas and they each have different points of communication with the general public, with the board, with the outside world, that if you are all not on the same page, it is, it doesn't look, it's not, it doesn't look cohesive, right? And you never want to make somebody feel dumb. Um, I know things change rapidly. Some of us um, have been in the world where session comes um, and ends and then magically there's all these things that ha have to happen after legislative session and then you have to implement them really quickly and then you've got to figure out all these you know ways to do it and then somebody makes those decisions and then they reflect they go get put into play and then then they start including the frontline staff right when really when those bigger decisions are being made you should include the people who are, or if it affects them, include the ones who are actually do, you know, following through on what is required or the new program or imp, who's ever implementing those things um, because they need to be aware, but they also need to be respected at the table. Um, their voice matters. Um, they are an extension of your brand. Um, be consistent. Consistency is key. Um, consistency signals reliability and trust. Um, Ensuring your staff have the, have what they need to succeed, um, it it helps them with their burnout. It helps them with their compassion fatigue. It helps them with their time management. It helps them with so many things. Um, we all know that in the human services world, you can train on a thousand different scenarios, and the very next one is one that you could have never thought of, right? And then they need more resources or they need to, you know, to help this family. Let's say they needed to help the family because they were being evicted and they were needing to go through um, the abuse hotline for something else. And they needed to, um, you know, the kids didn't have shoes and, you know, all of these things, all of these 
stressors and situations come out in these conversations with the communities that you all serve. And it's up to your frontline to be able to serve them and to serve them well. Your frontline needs to have those tools. They need to know what exists in the community. They need to be well versed on what resources there are. Um, they need to know you know, how to best access those resources to connect the community um, to them and then also to connect each other, right? So when you have frontline staff and you are making referrals to other agencies, sometimes somebody is filling out that referral because they're being told to fill out the referral, but they don't really know what the other agency does or, or how they can best utilize that, you know, is, is there something else that they can be referring for? Um, and so being mindful that, you know, agencies that you work with side by side may know one or two things about what you do, but they may not know all of the programs or they may not know all of the ways to access resources. And so um, keep sharing, share with each other as much as you can. Um, and then as soon as things change, um, sh share them as fast as you can um, when things are ready um, so that, you know, each each provider, each human service agency is equipped to best serve the families, right? Because the last thing anyone wants to do is to send a family, you know, on a, a wild goose chase um, to 25 different places when they could have just gone from point A to point B and gotten most of everything done. Um, and so um, assess what your agency stands for. We talked about that earlier. Incorporate those values um, into your everyday uh, both internally and externally. Um, if you stand for something, your staff need to have that passion too and understand why and how and how they can be passionate and advocate outside um, of the agency and you know where they can speak up. Um, but you also need to make sure that the community around you know knows what you stand for. Um, you know, it, it's just as important to you know, hold everything internally as it is externally. Um, they're both are equal and of the same um, in importance because people need to know what you stand for. Um, they may recognize your logo um, and that has happened in the past. You know, somebody puts out a great logo and rebrands themselves and then nobody knows what they do. Um, it, you know, that doesn't go very far. Um, you need to tie what you stand for to your branding and your logo and your mission and vision um, so that people do know both internally and externally how to best, um, you know, access your services and um, knows what you do to be able to share with others um, and be intentional um, with your internal and external communication. Um, it's so hard sometimes. I know the day goes by and things, you know, get crazy and you, you, you assume sometimes that people are already aware of something, but when things change within um, your agency um, or outside of your agency that affects your agency, um, just be intentional. Um, even if it's a, you know, one sentence, two sentence email to those you think it'll affect, um, do it so that the next time, you know, the last thing you want is for a family or a client to access your services and be told no when an hour earlier something had changed, but the message never got to them, right? And so these, these high needs families that everyone is serving, no matter what the age of the child or, you know, they, they all come with, um, situations that are all unique and different. And, and each of us on this call is unique and different. And each of us has our own adventure that we're going on. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if all of our agencies were at top of mind um, when it came to different scenarios when you're working with somebody? Um, so just, you know, think about who you partner with, think about who you send referrals to and, and send a request to them and say, hey, we wanna know more about you you know, do you want to know more about us? We would love to share some information so we can best serve our communities around us. Um, because ultimately, um, you know, when you want those people to be top of mind aware, um, anyone, you know, with the work that you do, the agencies that you're, you're serving, um, you know, you want to have 
the general public be top of mind aware about what you do. Um, you want your brand to be strong. You want to be out there in the world. You want it to be recognizable, but you want those feelings attached to your brand to be good ones. And you want your community to know exactly what you do and how to access it. Um, the last thing you want is for somebody to be like, I wish I knew what they did, or they used to do this, but they stopped. And now I don't know what they do. Um, or they, you may have a new program. Um, so just, just be mindful. Um, awareness, brand, and community um, are huge for the long term. Um, and so, LaShawn said earlier, I'm clearly invested in the frontline staff. Um, I held down customer service. I held down um, uh, child care resource and referral, um, early care and education teams, and uh, psychiatric clinics, behavioral health clinics. Let me tell you, your front line is your rock um, and your rock you need to take care of um, and make sure that, you know, if you are working in the human services world, a trauma informed approach um, is amazing. Um, there are different uh avenues you can take to trauma-informed approach, but it's one way to empower and educate your frontline to better serve the community and work with each other, um, as well as, you know, reflecting on the stuff that, you know, their own adventures that they're going through um, and the, the families that, you know, they have, um, whether they're working with them or their own. But one simple way is um, going through a trauma-informed approach with your frontline, um, because your frontline, like I said, carries your brand. They are an extension of your brand. Um, so making sure they have what they need is, is key and crucial to the work that you do. Um, but the six guiding principles to trauma-informed approach, there's safety, trustworthiness, and transparency, peer support, collaboration, and we all know how huge collaboration is. Um, you can get more done with more people um, going in the same direction. Um, empowerment, voice and choice, and cultural, historical, and gender issues. And so this is one way um, that different agencies can empower and educate and build their brand um, by building up their frontline. Um, another way is to cross-train employees. Um, it's a huge return on investment. Uh, you want them to be able to better collaborate, uh, increase their motivation. Uh, it increases workforce sustainability. Um, when somebody's cross the the worst one of the worst feelings in the world is feeling dumb, right? You work somewhere, you should know something. Somebody's yelling at you like you should know it because that's you know you work there and um, something as simple as cross training. Um, you know, obviously we can't know how to do all of the ins and outs of everybody's job. But if there's a way um, to break down the silos of each person's um, position and, and simple ways to connect each other to cross train and make things easier, um, again, that's helping on the inside internally in your agency, but also externally, a family's not getting bebopped and you know, a million directions, you know, somebody, the first person is, is able to help them and direct them um, to something that they need. It increases efficiency, um, both for the family and for the staff. Um, and then it also makes your company more agile. So um, both the trauma-informed training and the cross-training employees, I highly recommend. Um, and then I wanted to give a shout out to um, Kim Sinith. I don't know if she's on here. I can't see all of the participants. Um, she's the UPHS member. Um, she's the director of the Learning Pavilion. Um, she decided to me and uh, she wanted to invest in her staff for the long term, right? So, so often you have professional development. That's a check the box. You do it for an hour, um, then it's done. She wanted to hold her team in, uh, in a position of accountability, um, a position to educate, a position to team build. Um, and so she has made the investment to do long-term team building um, with her team. And each session will work on that um, on the previous session and move forward. Um, but she, she wanted to build a stronger team. Her brand is out there in the community, um, but she wanted to make sure that she invested and took care of 
those internal members and empowered the front line and educated the front line. And um, I just wanted to give it a shout out to her because team building builds trust. Um, and it's not something that you earn. Um, it's something you give. And so, so often you hear people, I need to earn that trust back. No, it happens in such a more natural way when you trust others to do the job that they've been hired to do. When you trust others to have a voice and empower them to speak up and have that communication and that transparent conversation. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to her because she's doing it right over there. Um, and, and, and I've not seen that happen um, in all my years. It's been one hour professional development, never talk about that topic again, maybe in a year or maybe not at all, um, or have somebody come in and do it for two hours and then, you know, never see them again and <laughs> check the box that you did it. Um, you know, she, she's building up her team and, and trusting them to do their work, um, in learning about each other and growing stronger in their roles. So, um, again, trust isn't something that you earn. It's something that you give. Um, and I wanted to um, just throw this out there, um, this, uh, you know, in, in creating this presentation and really thinking about brands and awareness and community that this is something that stuck out to me that held all three. And a friend of mine from high school I grew up with um, in South Florida, he um loved basketball, loved basketball. And he would play in any neighborhood. He would, you know, he just, basketball was his thing. And he's very smart. And then he, uh, he could always write. I remember in high school, he could write. And um, the stuff, you know, he wrote was wonderful. Um, and I always admired the, you know, he, he just, he was very, he just was good people. And um, a few years after college, um, he popped back up on the radar and he was playing ball in different neighborhoods of New York. And he still was that same Joey and played basketball in the different neighborhoods and, you know, started uh, basically uh, this movement of, of community in basketball courts. Um, then he got into boxing and basketball and started these gym, this gym called Overthrow New York. And his slogan is, what are you fighting for? And they empower women. They, um, they're the anti-racism boxing club. They are, they stand for all of the things that, you know, you all are passionate about fighting for in the jobs that you do. They tied it to <laughs> gym in the neighborhood in I New York. Purpose, and I got to because they have community, they have a brand, and they fight and they fight hard every day, both physically boxing, um, but they're out in the. I mean, they they carry their messaging and their advocacy everywhere. Um, so just remember, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, reflect back. What are you fighting for? Um, and make sure that you incorporate that um, whatever you're passionate about into your everyday. Um, and I couldn't. Uh, leave y'all without giving you a little goodness for your worlds. Um, there is a shoe design contest for kids. If any of y'all are working with youth or um, have access to groups of youth, um, I have partnered with um, a few other businesses locally, Ruvos, the current and canvas and we sure kicks in community and y'all we launched this a week ago and um i'll get teared up if i start um i was going to read some of the the shoe entries for y'all but there are there are entries coming in from youth all over the united states and uh their work i'm i am excited to be able to share um once it closes all of their work with the world um it's a lot of good. Um, there, there are very talented kids out there. Um, a lot of them access, uh, you know, their emotions and what they're going through through art. Um, kicks take you everywhere. They, you know, your shoes take you places. And uh, so we wanted to do a little something for youth. Um, and then the winning 
designs will actually, um, the kids will get shoes designed for them um, in their design, um, exactly their design. And then uh, celebrities will also get their shoes um, in, their, in the winning kids' designs. Um, and then we'll put it out there to the world. But um, I wanted to share with you because it's open and available and free. And so if you've got youth that are passionate about any of, the, any of this, um, send them our way. Um, and any, do y'all have any questions for me? I know that was a lot in a, a little bit of time, um, but we still have a few minutes if anyone has any questions. Margo wants to know if you can put the link for the contest in the box, in the chat box. Sure. I can do that. Maybe, I'm not that technologically advanced. <laughs> Hang on, let's see. It's kickscollective.art, I believe. And while believe she's putting it in there, do we have any other questions? Was this helpful? To y'all? Yes, it was. Good. Good, good, good. Well, does anyone want to share anything good in your world before we go? I know y'all. Um, my name is Sheena Christie. I'm the director of Behave Elite. And um, what we are is a, a girls, well, historically girls, but that's all we have, girls age kindergarten through 12th grade. And basically we have a um, dance organization. And I just like to say like all of the information that you share, like I'm, I'm thinking like the whole time, like, yeah, I could touch this up or I can rebrand that or I could be more consistent on this and that. So I think that the information that you gave was very helpful and I will make sure I take it and apply where it's needed. Well, I appreciate that. And I actually know one of your girls and you do great work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Lots of positive comments in the chat. Uh, Jonathan asks, will there be a part two? Uh, we will definitely have Morgan do something in the spring, Jonathan. So stay tuned for that. Yes, sir. We appreciate I, that. I have a question. How could I get the um email or the link of the Zoom meeting recording? If you email me, Tatiana, you may have okay. to go to Waylon, um, okay. so I'll make sure that I get it to you. Okay. And it'll be on Facebook and our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Thank you. Well, we want to thank everybody for their time. Uh, for whatever reason, it seemed like January is just one of those super busy months and hard to believe February is knocking on the door. So um, thank you all for spending 50 minutes with us this morning. Morgan's contact information is on the screen. And as I said before, if you're interested in the presentation, feel free to send me an email. And once it's uh, ready, I'll make sure that we get that out to you. So thanks again. And you all have a great and wonderful day. You Thanks too. Be you safe. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.